Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at payroll liabilities and deduction. This topic is covered in introductory course as well as the CPA exam. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,600 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lectures. This is a list of all the courses that I cover, including many CPA questions. If you like my recording, please like them click on the like button it doesn't cost you anything share them subscribe put them in playlist if they help you it means they might help other people as well and connect with me on instagram on my website farhatlectures.com you will find additional resources if you are looking to supplement your accounting education to pass the cpa exam in this session we'll talk about something that you should be familiar with which are payroll liabilities how does payroll liabilities work? Well, think about when you get paid. When you get paid, you'll get paid a net amount, an amount that something was deducted from it. So let's take a look at a sample paycheck. The sample paycheck is for D.H. Jones, and the company is organization LMNOP. And this organization paid Mr. Jones or Mrs. Jones $1,400. That's the gross pay. Now, D.H. Jones walked away with only 1,044. So what happened between 1,400 to 1,044? Well, the employer is required, is required to withhold certain taxes. What are those certain taxes? For example, the employer withheld, they withheld means they took from the paycheck $98 for federal income tax. They took $70 for the, for the state they took $42 for Social Security and $56 for Medicare. Those are simply, in a sense, mandatory deductions. Mandatory deductions. Then the employer wanted to participate in the health insurance program, so they paid $25. They also have dental insurance and they have retirement. So after you deduct all of those, all of those deductions, D.H. Jones walked away with $1,044 in net paid. So this is the take home amount or the net pay amount. Net means something was deducted. And this is what we mean. Those that I, those right here, those are liabilities for the company. Those are liabilities. Why they are liabilities? Because that's not the company's money. That's the employee's money. All what the employee did is pay that money to the employer and the employer will eventually send that money to the federal government, to the state government, to Social Security and Medicare, so on and so forth. And to the health insurance company, to the dental and to the retirement plan. Another picture to look at the same thing is something like this. For example, the gross pay is 1400 Well, we have Social Security deductions of $42. And we're going to talk about those. We have Medicare deduction of 56 we have voluntary deductions which are these three are voluntary deduction the 25 the 15 and the 50 which is $90 volu different voluntary deduction the state took nine $70 the federal is 98 and the net pay for this individual was $1044 now eventually we're gonna look at the journal entry for this okay so basically payroll liabilities those are all liabilities those are all liabilities are from salaries and wages employee benefit and payroll taxes levied on the employer okay we're going to look at them shortly a little bit more in a journal entry now we need to talk about two specific taxes so we're going to focus on those two taxes which is which is in this on this paycheck let's let me highlight them in yellow because they are important we're going to have to talk about them social security and medicare tax Okay, those taxes are mandatory, and we have to know a little bit more about them. So what do we need to know about them? Those two taxes are under something called FICA. What is FICA? FICA stands for Federal Insurance Contribution Act. It's the law that allows the government to take that money away from you. How does FICA work? FICA is two taxes. One is called FICA Social Security, and the other one is FICA Medicare. It's the same law but it's imposed on two different taxes. FICA Social Security, I'm gonna say SS for Social Security and Med for Medicare, okay? Now, how does FICA Social Security and how does FICA Medicare works? So you have to know the rules. So now pay attention, pay a little bit of attention here. And the, these numbers are for 2018. They could change, you know, in 2019, 2020. They already changed in 2019 because we are, we are already in 2020. 
So, FICA rate, so there is a rate. The rate is a percentage. FICA takes 6.2% of your paycheck. 6.2%. So if you made $1,000, you multiply this by 6.2, and that's your Social Security tax. However, once you have earned up to, once you have earned up to 128,400, they stop. Listen to me carefully. Once the individual earned in a year, to be more specific, once in any particular year, once in 2018, you earned more than 128,400. Once you earn more, so if you earn $128,401, that additional $1 that you earned above that 128,400 is Social Security tax-free. You no longer have to pay Social Security on that additional dollar. Very important. So there is a limit. The rate is 6.2, but there is a limit. Now, this limit changed. I believe in 2019, it was in the 130,000. I don't know the exact amount. It's going to change anyhow. Every year it changes. Okay? So that's very important to remember that Social Security rate is 6.2, but there's a limit. Medicare, the rate is 1.45. The rate is 1.45 lower but it doesn't matter there's no limit if you make five dollars five thousand dollars five million dollars or five billion dollars you would keep on paying 1.45 percent on all your wages so there's no limit 1.45 percent okay so the employer must withheld notice it's must it's not option they must withheld taxes to the Internal Revenue Service. So when it comes to FICA Social Security and FICA Medicare, they have to withhold those taxes. Okay? Remember Social Security, they stop at some point. Once you reach 128,400. Now, the employee income, they could be subject to other taxes and withholding. Like what? Like federal tax and state tax and local tax in the U.S. So the federal government wants their share. The state government wants their share and in, in, in local government. You know, local tax is not in everywhere, but we have to, you know, talk about it. So in, in the U.S., you could have, not you could, you're usually subject to three different taxes. Actually, actually, up to this point, five, you are subject to FICA Social Security, FICA Medicare. Then you have federal income taxes to pay, state income tax to pay and local up to this point five different taxes so those amount are withheld depending on the employee's earning tax rate and the number of withholding allows so how much do they take federal income tax well depending on when you what you tell them what's your status single married how many withholding you have it's it's a topic for a different discussion but the point is you tell them you fill out a form called to be more specific form called w4 and based on that they will take your federal withholding state and local usually they are flat rate for example in pennsylvania the state is 3.07 and most local is one percent okay but the point is it's usually flat now you have to remember that employer must pay the taxes from the employee gross pay to the appropriate government agency so when 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 your employer takes that money they don't keep it they send it to the federal government, they send it to the state government, they send it to the local government. So they have to, it's a liability on them. Remember, that's a liability. Again, the amount withheld depend on the employee request because the employee could have also other voluntary deductions. Other voluntary deductions, like what? Union dues. If you're part of a union, you have to pay your dues. You'll tell your employer, take $20 from my paycheck. If you want to send some money to your savings account, if you are contributing to your pension if you are paying for insurance if you'd like to give some money to the red cross or to, to your favorite charity those are amount withheld but those are voluntary deduction you tell them to take it out okay employers owe voluntary amounts withheld from the gross pay to the designated agency so they take this money based on what you tell them then they send it to your union they send it to um uh, the red cross they send it to blue cross blue shield you know, you, to your 401k administrator, whoever you want the money to be sent to. Now, the best way to illustrate this is let's take a look at an actual journal entry. So let's assume a company paid an employee $2,000. Let's take a look at the journal entry for that $2,000. Okay, if they pay $2,000, the company will debit salaries expense $2,000. Now, in previous sessions, you say they pay $2,000, debit salary expense credit cash $2,000. Well, that's not really what happened. 
what happened is from that two thousand dollar the the employee the employee now we're assuming that this employee did not reach one hundred twenty eight thousand four hundred the limit they'll have to pay six point two percent for their FICA Federal Insurance Contribution Act, which is Social Security. If you take 2,000 times 6.2 will give us $124. Now we have, now we credit an account called Social Security Taxes Payable, which is a liability. The employee will have to pay 1.45 for their Medicare. So if you take 2,000 times 1.45 will give you 29,000. Again, FICA Medicare Payable. And I'm gonna highlight those two taxes because we're gonna get back to them shortly. So I just want to make a note of them for now. Give me one moment, please. Okay, so let me just let me highlight them because we're gonna we're gonna see those two taxes down the road. So I just want to highlight them for a reason. Give me one moment, please. So just remember those: the one twenty-four and the twenty-nine. Just make a note of them. Okay. Also, the employee will have to pay based on their income two hundred and thirteen dollars to the federal government. Employee federal income taxes payable again a liability this the medical seems there's no state taxes employee medical insurance payable payable notice it's a liability 85 dollars and union dues payable another liability that the employee takes from your paycheck 25 so what's left to the employee of the 2000 what's left is 1524 its salary is payable okay so this is to accrue the payroll for january then on february 1st we pay the employee we debit the payable and we credit cash so what happened is now all these withholdings are liabilities to the company liabilities means they have to send this, the fica money to the to washington dc the fica the federal government goes to the same place washington dc the medical goes to you know blue cross i'm just making this up blue cross blue shield the insurance company employee union dues goes to the union so all this money is being withheld and every time they pay it they will debit the payable and they will credit the liability so that's one part of payroll liabilities or payroll expense so what's the other part what's what you don't see behind the scene what you don't see behind the scene is this if you are an employee if you are an employee in other words if you work for a company your employer the company that you work for they have their own taxes they are responsible for paying taxes what are we talking about here well let's talk about them your employer is supposed to match FICA taxes which is FICA Social Security and FICA Medicare employer pay amount equal to to what withheld from the employees gross pay so let's go back to those two that I highlighted in yellow let me go back and highlight them in yellow and talk about them if you pay if you paid $124 your employer will have to match that 124 if you pay 29 dollars your employer will have to match that so your employer behind the scene will have to match that why because the true rate for fica social security is 12.4 percent not 6.2 you pay 6.2 your employer pay 6.2 the true rate for for fica medicare is 2.9 not 1.45 you pay 1.45 your employer pays 1.45 now if you're self-employee if you have your own company you have to pay both so the first thing you need to know that the employer behind the scene the employer behind the scene pays those two taxes on your behalf which is they are responsible for doing so because you are an employee in addition to those two taxes your employer pays federal and state unemployment there are two additional taxes two additional taxes that you don't pay now in Pennsylvania because I live in Pennsylvania I'm familiar with the state you do pay a small amount in state unemployment but we don't have to worry about this in general in general employer only pays federal and state unemployment what are those federal and state unemployment basically let's talk about first Social Security because we didn't really talk about why do you pay Social Security you pay Social Security so when you when you are retired or disabled okay when you usually when you are retired that's the purpose of it you are get you get paid some amount of money to live off based on what you contributed medicare is when you retired the government will cover you from an insurance perspective so any medical expenses you are covered by the government so that's what you paid for those fica social security and fica medicare what about the federal and state unemployment the state unemployment and this is a big issue now especially with the coronavirus many people are going to be laid off state unemployment is 
when you are when you lose your job of a fault that's not of your own so basically you were laid off for example now the coronavirus many people many people already 3.2 million people lost their job last week so what happened is when your employer says i'm sorry i don't have any business i have to let you go so what happened is you file unemployment with the state as long as your employer which they have to pay into the state pool they have to pay money to the state then when you are laid off you will get you will get money from the state basically 60 to 80 percent of your salary generally speaking within a limit so why do you pay why does the government also pay federal why does the employer not the government also pay federal unemployment with it state is to get your money back the federal the federal basically monitor the state and if the federal needs if the state need help the federal government will intervene and help them with the unemployment because that happened in 2007 2008 the government the federal government kicked in a lot of money to help the state fund their unemployment so that's why you pay both obviously you pay more to the state and a little bit to the federal government okay so how much do you pay in taxes for the state and how much do you pay for the federal government so listen to me carefully let's talk about the federal government first this is FUDA it's called abbreviated as FUDA Federal Unemployment Tax Act FUDA here we go the rate is the rate is six percent that's the rate but watch you only pay 6% on the first 7,000 of wages. So once the employee make more than 7,000, the employer, the company will stop paying taxes on your behalf. So the rate is 6%. However, they will give you a credit up to 5.4 for Sura paid. So what happened is they would say, okay, you are responsible for 6%. Then on literally on the form, and I used to fill out a lot of these forms, lit, lit, literally on the form, they would say, okay, are you in good standing with your state? In other words, are you paying your unemployment with the state? And 99.999% of the time, the answer is yes. If that's the case, the federal government says, I'm going to give you a credit of 5.4%. So all you have to pay me is 0.6%. So the rate, the food rate is 0.6%. But no, it's 6% originally. Then the federal government gives you a credit. And remember, there is a limit. So let's explain a little bit more how does the limit work. It means... The maximum amount we pay per year is 7,000 times 0.6%. It's even less than 1%. It's even less than 1%, 0.6%. That's the maximum amount we pay on behalf of an employee. So this is FURA. Now, let's talk about SURA. SURA is a state unemployment tax. Well, each state is different. So in the problem, when you are, you know, when you are giving the problem, you're going to be told it's 5.4 or 3.7 or 6.2. It doesn't matter. And all, also there is a limit. And we're going to assume the limit is 7,000. The limit, each state has a different limit. But for our purposes, we're going to use a limit of 7,000. Same exact concept. It means the maximum you will pay per year is 5.4, assuming the rate is 5.4 times 7,000 for any particular employee. Now the state, they have a merit rating system. Merit rating, it means if you don't let your employee go year after year, the 5.4 goes down to 5.0. Then again, if you don't let your employee goes, it goes to 3.7. So it goes down. However, your credit for the real world would still be 5.4. So the point is, if you don't lay off employees, that's the point I'm trying to make. If you don't lay off employees, your rate, your expense for the SURA will go down. The SURA goes down. So remember, in addition to paying the employee, your employer will have to incur FURA and SURA on your behalf. So let's take a look at an example to see how this will all work. You remember we paid that employee in the prior example $2,000? Remember that we, what we did is we pay, they paid 124 in taxes, in Social Security taxes. The employer will have to come up with 124 they also paid $29 in taxes. You have to come up with $29. You means the employer. Okay. So notice those two. You remember I highlight them in yellow and I told you remember those two numbers. We're going to see them again. And this is where we are seeing them now. This is where we are seeing them. Sorry about that. This is where we are seeing those two numbers. Remember I highlight them in yellow. In addition to those two, your employer will have to pay Sura and Fura. How much do they pay Sura and Fura? Remember, this employee got paid two thousand. We're going to assume that this employee did not reach seven thousand dollar yet. We're going to assume that this employee did not earn seven thousand dollar yet. Therefore, they'll have to pay five point four percent, which is one hundred and eight dollars, and for Fura, 06 percent, which come up to twelve dollars. So, adding all these up, those up will those 
four figures will add up to the payroll tax expense of $273. So simply put, you paid the employee $2,000 plus you incurred $273 in payroll tax expense. So simply put, this employee cost the company $2,273. Why? Because they paid the employee $2,000 and the employee walked away with $2,000. They did not really walk away with $2,000 because the employee took the $2,000. Then they had to pay their taxes, but the company incurred $2,000. Then the company had to pay $273 on behalf of that employee in various taxes. Now, so FICA amount are the same as the amount withheld from the employee gross wages. Notice they are the same. So the those two are the same. Whatever the employee pay, the employer will have to pay. Now I would say the best way to illustrate this is to actually work an actual example, which I will work an example in the next recording, just to make sure we clarify this example because we did not work with a limit. So it's very important to understand how the limit work in these exercises. Anyhow, in the next session, I would look at I would look at an example, then we'll move on to estimated liabilities. If you like this recording, please like it, share it, put it in playlist. If you're looking for additional resources, visit my website. Study hard, stay motivated, and stay safe during those coronavirus outbreak. Good luck.